Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Black Friday, everybody. This is Jeremiah J. Man Manero with J. Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in Rochester, New York with another A-Team Friday. Ask the experts anything meaningful. Thanks for tuning in. Please, in the comments, if you'd like to be more popular, post where you're from. Good morning to you, Jeffrey. And it's indubitably great morning. <laughs> uh, post where you're from. And what do you know about the data? What do you know about going down in the deep end? Today, we're going to be talking about how to get sellers now. We got a couple different products, but uh, we're going to talk about how we failed you first and how we're going to make that better. Uh, because I feel like with a lot of things, when we're talking about technology, I'm like, yeah, it's data, predictive analytics. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, you get it. This is how it works. It works. We do it. Uh, but where I feel that we have failed you is that uh, we need to educate you a little bit more so that you can implement these new systems into your real estate business, right? When we start talking about data, we start talking about messenger bots. It's an abstract thought for some. And so we are creating a program. Um, we're going to announce that on Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. Today's Black Friday. Uh, but in the comments, there's two things that I want you to notice. Okay. We got, uh, hold on. We got Jeffrey from New York City. Marianne McCreary from Howell, Michigan. All right, Marianne. Thank you for being with us today. Going to give you a little bit of a shout out here. Ba -doop, right there. Right after Jeffrey. There we go. Okay, uh, but you'll notice there's two comments that I posted in there. The first one is a landing page that I created so that you can get reminded of our lives, our, our live streams, when we're going to be going live. Uh, it's so bad how Facebook is with the algorithm. It keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And there's people that message me. They go, man, I missed it. I'm like, I emailed it. I did this. I did that. Uh, but if you opt in, I'm going to create a separate email list. If you, you need your email and your cell phone number and we will text you and email you when we are going live with what the subject is. No other spam. That's it. Okay. I'm going to tell you this. If you opt in, be sure you want to opt in because nothing annoys me more than people that opt in and then they go, stop texting me. I'm like, dude, I text you once a week with something that you wanted to learn about, which is technology. This is all free training. So if you don't want that, then I'm blocking you everywhere. And I just, you just didn't become my friend. All right. So that's that. And then the second one uh, today at 10 o'clock, right after this, uh, we're going to be doing a, an Amazon live broadcast, which is a new feature. I'm going to try to do it on Facebook as well, but I don't know if it'll work, but definitely in that link, you'll be able to watch it live on Amazon. We're going to go through all of our favorite cyber no it's black friday monday will probably add to it uh, but our favorite black friday deals that as a realtor as somebody who wants to do video as somebody who buys gifts for their clients uh there's there's a lot of great deals out there so we're going to review them so that you can get good deals this is the best time of year for you to invest in your business invest in yourself invest in your family invest in your clients invest in relationships and all those other things okay so in the comments why don't you put what you know about data, if you know anything at all, and then I'm going to switch over to my other shared screen. One second. Let's see if this works out for me. Bum, 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 bum. There it goes. There it goes. There we go. All right. This is about data and predictive analytics. I'm not going to bore you with the minutia, but data mining methods. Okay. You wish I would talk about this. There's different predictive and descriptive methods of classification, regression, association rules, and clustering. Nah, not going to happen. What you need to know is that it works great. Okay, data is a way that we never had in the past to predict certain events, predict certain behavior based on past behavior and all of the things they're doing. When you really look at data, if you were a data nerd, you'd be able to Oh, thank you, Jeffrey. Are individual facts, statistics, or items of information often numeric? I'd be more impressed if you were able to freehand type that rather than copy and paste the definition. Uh, but yeah, so if, if you look at the numbers, it's like looking at the past to predict the future. We've done this in real estate since the beginning of time. However, we're getting smarter. 
We're getting smarter if you choose to uh, subscribe to the data that's available to you. So some of you go, oh, the data doesn't work. It doesn't work. It certainly works. Every big company out there is using big data to pr predict behavior of the consumer and go uh, and be where they're going, right? So when you look at data mining, there's a bunch of different ways that they do it. Property data is the first way. Uh, there's companies like HomeSnap, I'm sure many of you, and, and you're going to see HomeSnap, who was just purchased by CoStar, uh, HomeSnap Pro, Homes.com. Uh, they have a likely to sell, is that what they call it? Likely to sell, I think it is, within the app. So you could actually go in a neighborhood and say, show near me, I want to see houses that are likely to sell. And they do it by things like uh, equity in the property right? Uh, how many properties in that area are also selling? Is the list price to sale price ratio? So there's things related to the property data and, and the, the MSA, the market service area as a whole. If that market MSA is increasing, then that property is increasing. The value is, and that person that's been there for a long time and has equity is then likely to sell, right? But there's other data sources that we, we've never had access to. coffee break. We've never had access to, uh, you know, pre 2000s, right? Let me think. I think I joined Facebook in 2007. I have to look at it again. Uh, but they're able to take social media, like all of the things that you do on social media. Think about that for a second. All of the things that you do on social media, all of the interactions, all of the searches, all of the clicks, all of the comments, all of the everything that you do, they know more about you than you know about yourself. I know they have me dialed in because every time I have an ad that comes up, I'm like, I want to buy this. 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 They have me dialed in. Uh, damn it. And, and it's like hard because I'm an early adapter. I see shiny things and I'm like, I, I'll take it. Right. So that's why Black Friday and Cyber Monday are my favorite favorite times of year. Uh, your search history, history, your spending habits. Now, when you look at your terms of service for like your credit card companies, uh, all of those, PayPal, I would imagine, Venmo, all of the digital type stuff, you clicked in there when you're clicking through everything and not reading, saying that you're allowing them to share your spending habits. Now, if you have an iPhone, uh, I just purchased a new iPhone. I switched over from Android. I know. Hold on. I'll do this. And I'll do this. Right? So I just switched over from uh, Android to iPhone. And what I'm realizing with every app, I the privacy is better with iPhones because they say, hey, do you want to share this information with this app? Android was like willy nilly, like everything. You get it all. You get all of our things. And so you allow them to do that. And then the big data companies, what they do is that's the new currency. Right? They're not selling widgets. They're not selling you know, items. They're selling your information, your data that they've collected to other companies. And then other companies decide what to do with it and try to predict your behavior and spend money where they need to. So in real estate, that's what we need to do. We need to be smarter with our money, right? Rather than why in the heck, they, you know, when I first started, oh, you get, a, you get an area, you farm it. You farm that area, you dump all kinds of money. And I say dump because dump to me means like it's not any good. You're wasting money there. But you dump all kinds of money into this farm and 10% of those people, 5% of those people might actually be selling uh, anytime soon. So you're wasting money on the 95% of the people. So let's go. Uh, the company that we like to work with and when we talk about J-Man's Lister Predictor, that's one of the items that we you may have heard us, the products you've heard us talk about. Uh, if you go to GetSellersNow.com, uh, that has more information. But they look at nine, these are the nine Ds, right? Life events. And I always used to use this when I was in uh, like a business networking group. I go, who do you know that's having a change in their life? Which means, uh, are they having a baby? Are they getting engaged? Did somebody die? Are they getting divorced? Did somebody graduate? Are they downsizing? Um, did they their job change? They're making more money, less money, right? Discretionary income. The daily grind is their employment. And then dumpsters. Yo, dumpsters is one that you would have never thought of. But if you think about dumpsters, think about rollout dumpsters. 
but also I, I know a, a data geek that tracks an API with waste management. But think about like the big rollout dumpsters. When that's delivered to a property, that property is likely to list soon. Wouldn't you agree? Like think about it. That means like something's getting cleared out, something's getting, you know, they, they might be gutting the kitchen, whatever the case may be. Uh, but even with the waste management, with the smaller uh, dumpsters, my buddy that tracks that, if there's a property that has had waste management there for a long time and all of a sudden they're not getting the garbage delivered, then that means that that property is vacant and there's a high likelihood that it will sell. What? What? Right? Because we all need garbage unless the person's really cheap and they're like dumping it at the local uh, <laughs> dump <laughs> or they go to their neighbor's house. I don't know. They got a rental property. Who knows? Uh, they track consumer spending, consumer behavior. Right. Let's let's go back here for a second. Consumer spending. What does that mean? So when you're getting ready to sell your home, what do you spend money on? They would track that. Right. You're gonna go buy boxes. Maybe you make a reservation with U-Haul. Maybe uh, you start. You go to Sherwin Williams and you buy paint. You go to the carpet store. You go to Home Depot. All of these things can lead to a sale and make it more likely. Right. Spending combined with with all of the other data that we talked about when you're talking about how much equity do they have in the home? How long have they been in the home? Are, is the home median, uh, is the neighborhood's median sale price increasing? And are other properties in that neighborhood also selling more often than they used to? Right? Think about that for a second because you have, you know, that there's always a neighborhood where, you're like, man, nothing sold in there in a while. And then one pops. And then it's like, ooh, did you hear what Henry got up the street for that house? Another pops, another pops. And then it's like, Popcorn popping, baby, right? So that's, you got to think about that. And then consumer behavior, uh, how likely they are to sell um, and, and how many buyers are in the marketplace, that kind of stuff. And then the demographics. The demographics. We know that we can't discriminate based on any of the protected classes. That's a fair housing violation. But when you look at data, uh, they say, okay, think about this. If somebody was... 65 years of age and the average person who's that age stays in their home 17 years. I'm just throwing out numbers in there. And in this neighborhood, uh, these properties are selling. This person has equity, been there a long time, but then the demographics don't fit for people who are more likely to move. Now, if you take that same person and it's a 35 year old millennial, okay? They just got a job promotion. They have equity in their home. They've been there for five years. Check, 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 right? And you tie in the demographics. Let's go. That person's going to get a, a high sell score, right? That makes sense? So when we're looking at how the companies do this, I told you like HomeSnap, if you have the HomeSnap app, you could look at this right now. Um, and that's going to get better. I think it, it will get better and it will make sense to invest in HomeSnap Pro as Zillow becomes less of your friend and more of your competition. Not that I feel like they're ever going to be my competition because I work by uh, relationship, right? By referral. But um, we have that. Realist has their own version. Remine as well. If you have Remine in your market, uh, Remine is a great way for you to take an entire area and say, okay, show me the sellers that are likely to sell. And they use data for that. So out of 100 properties, uh, maybe five in a neighborhood are likely to sell. So if you like prospecting, uh, you could cross-reference those pe that pe those people's information, get them on the phone. Or if you're like me, I'd rather just hello, I am here. Oh, you thinking about buying or selling? Right, have a, a good value proposition when you get to the get to the home. But hey, houses in this neighborhood have increased in value in the last five years, fifty four point six percent. Did you know that? Uh, if you're ever thinking about selling, please let us know. We can give you a free home equity estimate. That's what we like to do rather than comparative market analysis. We'll get to that in a second. All right. So with reevaluate, hold on. I think I have reevaluate shades. Okay. You like that? Yeah. It says it right there. All right. So with reevaluate, this is you import your existing database, right? For those of you who are like, I hate code calling because when I talked about remind, and, and and some of those other ones, you find the ones that are likely to sell. You're like, wait, well, what do I what, what do I do with them? 
I have to go talk to them. Yeah. You know, sometimes sales is an action sport, but if you don't like to talk to people, you're very passive, whatever the case may be, you send, you just send a postcard and hope that they'll call you someday because you're afraid of them saying, no, you're afraid of, you know, if it's fear of rejection, fear of failure is what keeps people from prospecting, but you're not going to do it. And I understand that there's, I, I, you can bring a horse to water kind of a scenario. So with this, this is your database. You take your database and you upload it into reevaluate or J-Man's list of predictor. Once that's uploaded, your contacts will be in there. And this is just a screenshot. This is not actually my database. So don't be trying to steal my people. Uh, and it'll give you a score. 97 is like, it's one out of a hundred. 80 to a hundred means uh, likely movers. They're like, yo, you need to contact these people right away or else they're going to be on your hot sheet tomorrow. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay, man, it's this coffee is so good. And I, you're not going to have 103,000. What is that? 103,000 contacts. I mean, I think if you really sifted through your database with past clients, A and B uh, type folks, you know, people that are, that are likely to refer you or have referred you and people that are likely to do business with you, 500 would be a good number, right? If you had 500 quality contacts, I don't think you should go through your your Facebook and scrape everybody's email off of there. Cause that's garbage. That's garbage. Um, database. Kaka. And actually when you import it in here, they'll sift through that stuff and see who has good email addresses. Who's not answering. Cause it's quality over quantity. When you talk about your database, that's another story. So let me just give you an example, right? This is, these are real people. Now let's just say I get this on the left-hand corner and maybe probably hard for you to see. As I look over here on the screen, but you say Wendy, Wendy Riesenberg is a potential hot, hot prospect. Okay. She's a revaluate score of 95. Then D cubes in 94. And then I am Joe Curry uh, is 90. Okay. So what I did, uh, I sent a text message to Wendy. I said, Hey, Wendy, I hope all is well. My crystal ball tells me that you need, might need a superhero. Um, need a real estate superhero. Is that right? Uh, not yet. Cassie and Chris would be staying in a campground for a couple of months and then hopefully buying. Okay. So Wendy's daughter is Cassie. This conversation actually continued on. Um, and then I, I verified that that was, that was a good email address for her. Boom. And I got a new email address from my database. So this conversation continued on. Her son, Scott is also looking to buy a home. One hot, uh, evaluate score of likely to sell of 95 leading to two transactions, okay? And this was the millennial mom, her two kids, her son is like in 40, millennial cusp, and the daughter's like 35, but the millennial mom who's doing searches on behalf of the children, looking for moving boxes, uh, moving companies, cross-country moves, all the things that parents do for their kids, right? Her search history, her spending habits made it go whoop, to 95. And this is evaluated on a daily basis, daily basis, not once a month. Cause once a month, shoot, but if, if it was once a month, by the time it told you, Hey, you got a hot prospect here, they gone, they're going to list with somebody else and you're going to be up the Creek without a listing. Okay. Uh, you can see I get it both ways. Emails. I don't check as often my text message I'm on top of. And so you get a text message like this. It says these people have a, um, as their score changes, their thresholds, it goes 80 to 100, 60 to 80, and then 40 to 60. So what we're going to be doing is setting up some systems here. Uh, an independent party actually, because look at, I'm in real estate just like you, and I know you, you guys are like, yeah, right. Okay. Independent party verified likely movers. Uh, with this, with uh, reevaluate, and one out of five of those people that were ranked between eighty to one hundred, one out of five, which is twenty percent, listed in the MLS within six months. One out of five. So think of that that, that conversion ratio right there it means one out of five people that you talk to in your database will list. One out of five. So whatever your if if your average transaction makes you 
six thousand dollars, that means you have to let's say six thousand divided by I'm gonna say five thousand, it gives me a round number. Uh you have to talk to five people in your database to make five thousand dollars. That means each conversation is worth a thousand dollars. It's crazy when you think about it like that, right? Each conversation is worth $1,000. If you're in a market like New York Metro and your average sales 500, 600, 1,000, your average commission's 20 Gs, yo, each conversation is worth $4,000. Now, I will say this, and this is where, again, I'm going to admit that I feel like I, I, did, I did fail you a bit, is that you have to have systems in place. So we're partnering not only with Revaluate for our J Man's List of Predictor, we're, we're also partnering with Wise Agent um, with different things that's integrated into the system so that when somebody reaches a threshold of like 60, then they get automatic, that will trigger something um, without getting too technical, where it will add them to a campaign, a soft sell, like let's say they reach 80, boom. Email goes out. Hey, would you like to register for J man's home sellers workshop? It's done virtually once a month. And they go, wow, I just got this email, honey. What great timing. J man's doing a home seller workshop for free. We could do it from home in our pajamas. Okay. So it's, they have to be added to a campaign because, uh, whether they're, they're in that 60 to 80, 80 to hundred, it takes follow up. Not every person you call is going to go, yes, I want to sell right now. Please come over. There's systems that, that, that have to be put into place. Okay. So if you look at this 6% of any database in one year is what you should be thinking about. 6% of all the people that you know, uh, are going to do, are going to transact in some way. Okay. So what's next for you? You need to have a strategy going into the new year. You need to have a strategy and we're going to make that strategy for you because our skill set really is helping people step outside their comfort zone, adapt to new technology, integrate that into the real estate business and make money, make money or give you more time, right? Whether you want to make more money or spend less time working, it's up to you. So the strategy is we have to do it all the different ways by land, by air, by sea, which means like we're going to put together a direct mail campaign. We're going to put together an email campaign. We can put together a Facebook, um, campaign, right? Let me just, I'm going to come back over here for a second. Let's see if this goes. Yeah. Okay. See with, and again, I don't want to get too geeky on you, but we're going to teach you this in our program that we're, we, we are creating or have created and we'll be launching, but our, with social media, when somebody reaches a certain threshold, I could then have that person, let's say, Joe Schmo, it's very popular, Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo reaches a threshold of 80. He then gets added to a list of likely movers, which is a customized audience that I have on Facebook that I have an ad running to constantly. So talk about passive, a passive way to get in front of them and stay top of mind. Joe's thinking about selling. We know he's thinking about selling because of the predictive analytics. You now add him to a Facebook campaign and boop, would you like to know how much your home is worth? Next day, thinking about selling, we can help. Next day, moving made easy with the Monero team. Next day, right? And I just like, Joe's all of a sudden like, dang, man. And like this guy, this this team is on top of it because I've been thinking about it. I've been researching it. I, I got I to gotta reach out to them. You don't ever have to even call them if you don't want to, but there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, we're going to help you with that strategy because then uh, the third part of this is messenger bots. Da, 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 da. With the messenger bots, let's see. I'm going to, let me pull this up first. Let's see if we could do this here. For those of you who have never experienced a messenger bot before, uh, it's nothing more than an automated conversation with a personal touch. That's what I like to call it. 
So if you scan this right over here, meow, 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 meow. if you scan that, that's going to take you to, a, to our bot gallery. We've created this as a demonstration to show you how it works. So in there, there's a home equity estimate flow, which means if somebody wants to know how much their home is worth, uh, it'll take them through a flow. They don't ever have to talk to me. Today's modern consumer, they don't want to talk to you as much as you think they do. They don't. Okay. They do not want to talk to you. So I ask them like, how much is your home? Uh, would you like the home equity estimate? Yes. No. What is that? And it, it brings them right back and it'll say, here, I'm going to pull this up actually to show you, to show you guys. As I pull this up, why don't you ask me any questions and tell me no more lies? Okay, guys. Really great. Happy Friday. Home equity estimates. Home equity questions. There we go. Okay, not seeing any questions. Let me show you how this works. I'm gonna go over here to another shared screen. Sellers are in your future, you see that? Okay, I'm gonna change this up for a second. I'm gonna go to my second screen. Let's see, Google Chrome. There we go, baby. All right, I'll leave this up here so you can scan that at any time. But I'll zoom this a little bit so you could also. I'll zoom it here. All right, so just imagine for a second, I can drive them in, in here. I could do it by a keyword. I can do it by a URL. So if you went to home equity, I think I have, or equity.jmanseminars.com or something, I create a subdomain, but... I can share that URL with them and I could put that anywhere. I could put that on a QR code that's sent as a postcard. Would you like to know how much your home is worth? Scan the QR code today. People are so used to that. Or I can create a custom domain, uh, home equity estimate or home is worth rochester.com. I don't know, just making it up, whatever you want to do and have that forward to the URL. Once that they come in here, this is what the conversation looks like. And let me, I'll get rid of this QR code one second. Hey, first question. Have you ever had a home equity estimate? Yes, no, what's that? Whatever the answer is, it's going to bring them right back to, awesome, would you like to get a current one? All you have to answer is a few questions. And then it goes through the questions as if you were having a conversation with them, right? What is the property address with city, state, and zip? Waiting for a reply from contact. How much do you owe on your current mortgage? Waiting for a reply from a contact. Do you have any other credit lines or liens to pay off on the property? Now, all of these fields, as they enter them, are saved in uh, another sheet for us. Okay. Do you have any other credit lines to pay off on the property? Please list all the improvements that you have made to the property since you've been there with the date and how much it costs. Now, if you're not using RPR, the Realtor Property Resource, this is where it's at, right? All of this information is exactly what I would need in order to compile a seller's report. Okay. But if you're using cloud CMA or whatever the case may be, still all the same info. I just like RPR, but not all of you are realtor members. If you're just an agent, you don't have access. All right. So list all the improvements. You have to make sure if I was asking this question, it'd be what were the home improvements? When were they done and how much did they cost? Three different things that are very important there. It then finishes with thank you for all the deets. We will compile your report and have it to you within 24 hours via email. We promise that this is a no obligation estimate of what your home might be worth, might be worth. Is this the best email? It pulls their email from their Facebook account, right? This is all happening via Facebook Messenger. Okay, great. We will send it there. Please con contact us if you have any other questions when you receive it. P.S. Here is a free gift on the ROI for home improvements. See what I'm doing here? They come to me for service. I deliver that service without being a salesperson. And then I exceed expectations with another free gift, which I know that they value because they're thinking about selling their home. So who doesn't want to know the best return on investment? Boom. I know. I know. Okay. And then you do it and you follow up. You send an email 
Um, if you want to follow, you know, if you have their information, you could always follow up with a phone call a day or two later, but that's how you incorporate the, there's so much more to the bot, but I'm just kind of blazing through it. Let's see here. That is the back end of it. I mean, that would be done in a conversation, right? If you've experienced that in messenger. Now, if you don't use, you're like, well, my people are on Facebook. I'd be like, well, that's not true, but this will work currently. They have integrations right now that are active with Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, SMS, email, and something else called Telegram, which maybe it's just not as popular here in the United States. But they got it all. Let me go here and make sure the settings. Yeah. Instagram, Messenger, SMS, email, WhatsApp, and Telegram. So omni-channel um, marketing. Just ways to keep in touch with the folks. That is going to bring us to 940. And then I got to prepare for the 10 o'clock that we're going to be doing on the Amazon. Cuckoo! Ah! <laughs> that was my Amazon impression. So do we have any questions before I go? Um, you need to tune in on Monday. We're going to be doing an in-depth tune in at 10 o'clock to get our Black Friday specials. But Monday at 10 o'clock, uh, you should already see it scheduled somewhere. Uh, but opt in in the comments. You can see it at the top for all of our live stream. Our next one will be uh, on Monday at 10 a.m. where we're going to be going in-depth into our link to 10 to the 10 a.m. is in the chat as well. Um, up top, there's two of them, right? It says amazon.com slash live broadcast slash 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 slash. But I didn't have time to create a subdomain name for that, but that's what it is, okay? But Monday at 10 o'clock, we're gonna be doing a Cyber Monday special with our Rediverse Real Estate Tech Advantage. Oh, shoot, I gotta... Let me see what this is. Hold on. I was messing with the, with acronyms yesterday. Uh, I can't remember what, what the acronym is. Really stupendous education. I don't know. But it'll be a six-week training program uh, combined with, with uh, JMAT's Lister Predictor, combined with the Messenger Bots, combined with a beefed-up uh, CRM from Wise Agent with exclusive resources that you will not be able to get anywhere else. So you need to be on with us on, and my Rochester accent came out, damn it. You need to be on with us on Monday at 10 a.m. And I will, if I can't post the Amazon uh, Cyber Monday deals, Black Friday deals here on my page because it has to be on Amazon, I'll repost it, okay? Last but not least, Restream.io is on sale. That's the one thing I'll tell you right now uh, because I canceled mine last year because they wouldn't give me the Restream Black Friday deal. I was like, well, screw you guys. I'm done. I'm out. And I, and I, like, I bluffed them, and they're like, go ahead. And I was like, okay, I had to cancel at that point. So now I've, I've taken a year off. Uh, it's definitely a great way for you to stream to multiple platforms. I'll be getting that. It's 50% off, so 8 bucks a month. Uh, on on the lower pro side, there's pro, there's premium, there's expert, whatever. But it's like eight, twenty, forty, sixty, or something like that. Definitely fifty percent off. It's not a gimmick. I will take advantage of that right now. It's Jeremiah J. Manero. Let's see what kind of sound effects we're gonna go out to. Doom doom ch, doom doom ch. You guys are like still full of turkey. I'm not hearing any. <laughs>